Um, you speak about three unexpected isomorphs in the matter of Thank you. Actually, during uh, the first part of the talk, I'll talk mainly about the services. So, we uh, may know all this stuff, but still, uh, I need to do that you see what I want to talk about next. Okay? So, so of course, don't, don't hesitate to uh, interrupt and uh, ask questions. So, uh, complex. Uh, K3 surfaces. So um, all, all that I'm going to say is going to be over the complex numbers. There are, there's lots of uh, interesting things about K3 surfaces in positive characteristic, but um, I'm not really uh, qualified to talk about them. And, and also the uh, generalization to um, higher dimensions is not clear what's, what's going on at the moment. So. Since this is supposed to be an introduction to uh, hyperkiller manifolds, I'll stick to the uh, complex numbers. Okay, so, so what is a uh, uh, K3 surface complex? So a K3 surface is a compact, I mean over C, complex surface. S such that so we want the uh, canonical class to be trivial. So another way to express that is that the uh, the space of holomorphic two forms uh, on S is one-dimensional and generated by an element which uh, is everywhere uh, vanishes nowhere. Okay, trivial canonical class. So if you only impose that, you have a K3 surfaces and also abelian surfaces, which is also a very uh, interesting topic, but uh, different. So the other condition uh, that we want to impose is that H1 of SOS is zero. Okay. So why are these surfaces interesting? Where they sit some, somewhere in between uh, rational surfaces, which uh, are interesting for many reasons, but as, which are sort of uh, well understood. And uh, surfaces of general type, where, of which there are too many. And uh, so, I mean, it's also very interesting, but uh, it's hard to give a talk about uh, uh, surfaces of general type. And uh, so, what else? Uh, they also uh, have uh, interesting dynamics. I mean, I'm not going to talk about this, but. Uh, So, for example, uh, they, have, they are the only uh, algebraic surfaces which have uh, automorphism with a positive entropy and no fixed points. Uh, they also have interesting uh, arithmetic properties. Arithmetic properties, uh, rational points, stuff like that. And uh, also uh, interesting uh, geometric properties. So, for example, there's, uh, there are results about uh, how many rational curves uh, are on a K3 surface. So, so people think that uh, there should be countably, uh, countably many rational curves on any K3 surface. So that's almost known, but not, not completely yet. And, uh, and so on and so on. So to, to do a lot of, of this stuff, actually, you have to know also the theory about positive characteristic, because a lot of these results are obtained by reducing to uh, characteristic p. OK. Um, so uh, now that I've explained why they're interesting, so let me uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, continue with their, uh, what are their properties. So first of all, the Hodge numbers. So the Hodge diamond is, uh, is as follows. Uh, maybe I should say first uh, that they are all uh, Keller. So this was uh, 
So S is a Cauchy surface, S is scalar. So this was originally proved by SU. But uh, now there's a, a sort of a general result which says that uh, whenever you have a complex compact surface with B1 even, uh, well, it's not completely clear that it's all, but anyway, so they are all Keller. And, okay, and so the Hodge diamond is as follows. So half of the Hodge diamond, so H naught, there's no H1. And um, so here I, I always get wrong, number wrong, it's 20. Okay, so B2 is 22. And B1 is 0. Okay, not only that, but uh, so the H2 of S, Z, so it's a free abelian group uh, of rank 22. And it's, uh, it has a unimodular uh, form, integral form, which is given by the intersection product. So it's a lattice. Okay. And it's an even lattice. It's not very hard to prove that. And so as there's a classification of uh, unimodular uh, odd lattices. And uh, since the, uh, I should say that the signature, so the signature is uh, 319, <coughs> you've got um, yeah, so 319. And so the, uh, there's only one even unimodular lattice of signature 319, and it's uh, 3U. So that is then the way of, do, of uh, writing lattices, but the 3 is really a sort of a U plus U plus U, okay? Plus E8, negative definite, uh, plus twice. Okay, so U is the uh, hyperbolic lattice rank 2, and E8 is a positive definite lattice of um, rank 8. Okay? So that's, uh, that's this. So what else? And so pick S is a sub-lattice. Pick out group of S embedded into H2. Okay? That comes from the fact that if you write the exponential sequence, there's usually a, a map from P of S to uh, H2, but the kernel is uh, controlled by H1 of S OS, okay, which is zero in that case. Okay, so that's about uh, uh, sort of the uh, topological properties. And so uh, here I started with a sort of a uh, compact complex, no uh, algebraicity um, assumed. But mostly I'll be concerned with the uh, projective varieties, so in, in particular projective K3 surfaces. So I'll, I'll uh, look at pairs, so pairs uh, SL, where L is an ample line bottle on S. And uh, so it's called a, uh, so you can view it either as, as a line bundle or uh, as a class in H2. It doesn't make any difference uh, be because of this uh, inclusion here. And uh, so its square is uh, an even number. It's an even lattice, which is positive because L is ample. And uh, oh, so actually, sorry, my notation, I don't remember why, but it's the E. And uh, by Kodaira vanishing theorem, the uh, H1 of L is zero. The H2 of L also is zero by said duality, for example. And so the, uh, the H0 of L is given by the Euler characteristic. Okay, and that's equal to uh, E plus two, okay? So in other words, uh, the sections of L gives you a, a priori uh, rational map from uh, S to P uh, E plus one. Okay. So in, in some cases, this, uh, the linear system L has base points. So this uh, map is not morphism. But in, uh, in, in most of the time, so I don't want to uh, explain too much. L is base, is base point free. 
So let me describe uh, the situation for uh, small e's. So the first uh, case is when e is equal to 1. I mean, most of the time means that actually the, I mean, the situation is, uh, is, uh, very, uh, is under control. Uh, everything is known. I mean, if L has a base point, then there's a, a strange divisor class on S and so on. Everything has been analyzed for, has been known for many years. I should say that a lot of results about linear systems <coughs> and K3 surfaces you can find in a paper by Sandana. I don't know exactly when, but that was in the 70s. Okay, so I just want to sort of uh, give a, a brief description and not, not go into detail. So in that case, uh, so the degree of L is 2, and it has a, the a phi L is, is going to be a, a, a morphism, and uh, so it lands in P2. Now since the degree of L is 2, is, this is a double cover. And it's, uh, if you want to know, it's branched over six ticks, a sex tick. And conversely, any time you have a double cover branched over a smooth sex stick, it's going to give you a K3 surface with a polarization of degree 2. Okay? When E is equal to 2, okay? so this is sort of, I'm describing here uh, sort of the, the general situation. Okay? In particular, so most of the time you can take it, for example, that's going to be the case when uh, the Picard group of S, of S yeah, is generated by L. Okay. So any curve on S has a class which is a multiple of L. Okay. And in, in that case, nothing much happens. Uh, maybe if I want to be precise, I, I, I want to assume here that L is not divisible. I mean, it's not a non-trivial multiple of another ample divisor. Okay. Usually for a polarization, you assume that the class is not divisible. If it is divisible, then you take the uh, sort of a primitive element corresponding to, uh, to that class. Okay? So E equals 2, phi L is, uh, in that case, an embedding in P3. And the image is aquatic. Okay? And conversely, any uh, smooth quadric in P3 is a, K, is a K3 surface. Okay, so let me keep going. I want two more cases. After that, you can still continue, but it gets more complicated. So uh, in that case, uh, phi L is an embedding in P4, and the image is a complete intersection of two hypersurfaces of degrees Three, uh, two and three, okay, a quadric and a cubic. And conversely, you can check using a junction that uh, any such smooth surface is a K3, E equals four. Okay. Th these are the only cases where the image of phi L is a complete intersection. This is the last one. And the image is a complete intersection of uh, degrees two, two, two. So the image is the intersection, complete intersection of three quadrics. Okay. And after that, uh, there are still descriptions for low E's uh, by Mukai. Okay, up to, uh, I don't remember, but. So they are sort of, a, a, they are not complete intersections in PN, but they are complete intersections into some, yes. So it says that the form W vanishes nowhere on these surfaces, and um, if it's branched over the sextics, does that mean that it's got singularities over the sextics, like branch coverings, or is it a different terminology? Uh, so, so the form is on S, okay? Uh, it does not come from a form on, on P2. So, so now it vanishes nowhere. I mean, the, the fact that there's a form on a... Uh, a non-zero form on S here uh, has li little to do with the fact that it's a double covering of, of P2. You just, th there's, a, there's a formula that tells you that the canonical class of S is, so whenever you have a double cover, the canonical class of S is the inverse image, so let's say pi is the double cover of the canonical class of the base here, P2, 
plus, let's say, one half of the, of the branch locus. Okay. So the branch locus is a sextic. So that's going to be 3, degree 3. That's degree minus 3. So it's trivial. Okay. In some sense, it tells you that uh, uh, your form is, is the pullback of a form that has poles on P2. Okay? But when you pull it back, then the, pole, the poles disappear because of the ramification. Okay, so I was saying that uh, Mukai gave the, uh, analogous, more complicated descriptions for low E's, where S uh, is a usually sort of a complete intersection or in some Grassmannian or some uh, homogeneous spaces or zero rho psi of a certain uh, uh, vector space, um, ve uh, vector bundles. Okay. Uh, so a, a lot of, uh, of uh, geometry on uh, of, uh, linear systems on, on K3 surfaces has to do with the fact that if you take a, uh, so assume that L is base point free, then you take a, a general element. Whoops in the linear system. That's going to be by Bertini a, a smooth uh, irreducible curve. And uh, so the, the, the genus of this curve is, uh, so I, I, okay, with my notation, uh, let me get this right, it's e plus 1, yep. And uh, so if you look, uh, so let's say that uh, L is very ample, so you have an embedding of S uh, in P uh, E plus 1. And so the curve view is obtained by taking a, a general hyperplane section of S. So you get a, uh, so here you get a, a hyperplane, H. So that's a P E, which is also P uh, G minus 1. G being the genus of the curve, this embedding is the canonical embedding. Okay, so this was uh, phi L, and that's phi KC. Okay. And of course, a lot is, no, is known about canonical embeddings of curves. Okay, I mean it's an embedding. It's not always an embedding. Uh, it's only an embedding when C is not hyperelliptic. But uh, using this, you can uh, learn a lot about the, uh, the nature of uh, phi L. So uh, in particular, uh, let me uh, so state a few facts, most of which are proved using uh, this uh, thing here. So L is ample here. OK, so I should, uh, OK, uh, ample and base point free. Ah, actually, it's not, not necessary for in all cases. No. So first of all, uh, L is, uh, is projectively normal. If, uh, OK, so what do we need here? Uh, we need base point 3. And we need uh, L, L2. So that's with the, the uh, analogous notation here, E at least 2. So projectively normal means that uh, so the the, uh, the maps from uh, the symmetric product of H not of L to H not of uh, L K. Okay, so uh, okay, let me write L tensor K to avoid sort of a uh, confusion with uh, L square here, which was an intersection product here, which was a tensor product. So this is subjective. Uh, also, there is a sort of a, a, a term which actually I didn't know about uh, before uh, preparing this uh, this lecture is that uh, L L square. Uh, this is where I need the tensor product. Uh, L square is always base point three, and L k, where k is at least three, is always very ample. So if you know something about uh, linear systems on abelian varieties, this is also true for uh, on abelian varieties. Okay, but uh, there is no direct connection that I know of between these two facts. 
Okay. Um, what else? Okay. So the fact that you have a, a common multiple of any uh, of a line model of any degree, I mean, on, of fixed degree on, over any K3 surface, uh, allows you to construct a uh, modelized space. Okay. So I'm not going to go into uh, details here. Um, what you need here is this sort of theory of the Hilbert scheme. To construct sort of a, uh, a family which uh, has all the, the uh, polarized K3 in it. And then you need to take some kind of quotient. And uh, so usually people do it using uh, geometric invariant theory. But uh, here it's not, uh, it's not so easy. And uh, so it's, uh, there's a theory by uh, Fivek. Which allows you to uh, to do that. Okay, so uh, the the outcome is that there is a uh, so let's say so let me state that as a theorem uh, polarized. So polarized means that there is a, f a polarization of K three surfaces of fixed degree. So in my notation, 2e uh, have a uh, quasi-projective coarse modularized space. So I think this now standard notation is uh, k k uh, 2e. So a uh, quasi project uh, irreducible of dimension 19. Okay. So you can see that in these uh, in these examples, if you can count parameters sort of uh, quickly, uh, or you can even do uh, GIT in this case. So the number of parameters would be quadics in P3. So the number of uh, parameters is uh, four per three choose. Three, and then you need to divide by GL4, so minus uh, 16. That's sort of a, it's not the projective dimension. So here I have to divide by GL. So you find uh, 35 minus 16, that's 19. Okay. So you, you can do the dimension counts in those cases. But this is, this is for all E, OK? I mean, positive E. OK, and uh, so the last thing I guess I want to mention about uh, K3 surfaces uh, is the uh, Torelli theorem. So I'll, I'll give uh, two versions of it. So the Torelli theorem tells you that uh, uh, a K3 surface um, Polarized is sort of uh, characterized by its period, and the period is the uh, where this uh, one-dimensional space sits into the H2. Okay, so that there are several ways to uh, phrase that, but uh, so let me give sort of one which does not mention uh, modular space, and another one that does mention modular spaces. So the first one is sort of a down to earth. So uh, let's say you have two. Uh, polarized K3 surfaces. OK. Uh, I assume that there is a, an isomorphism between, so let me go the other way. OK, phi, phi. OK, so we assume such that. There exists an isomorphism like this. OK, so, so I want it to be an uh, isometry, so isomorphism of lattices. OK, with respect to this, uh, I mean, intersection four. I want it to send the class of uh, L prime to L. Okay, And I want it to be a Hodge isometry, so in other words, 
if I complexify phi, so I tensor everything by C here, I get an isomorphism between these two uh, complex vector spaces. And uh, so then they contain the uh, first uh, term of the period. So I want this phi here to send this vector space, uh, OK, so S prime, uh, sorry, equal. Okay, so that's, that's a Hodge isometry of polarized. Okay. So then the conclusion is that there exists an isomorphism between SL and SL prime, S prime L prime. So meaning that there's a, it's an isomorphism between these surfaces, which maps uh, or pulls back uh, L prime to L, such that uh, U upper star, I mean, the action of U in cohomology is given by phi. OK, so that's. Uh, Another uh, equivalent way to state this uh, theorem is via the uh, period map. Okay, so the period map is a little bit more complicated to, uh, to explain if you've never seen that before. So first of all, I want to fix uh, a lattice, uh, a fixed lattice, which is this lattice here. Okay, so let me call it uh, lambda k3. It's the lattice uh, which I defined over there. And uh, I take an element L. So that's going to be the class of the polarization. So I'm assuming this is a primitive element, meaning that it's not divisible and that its square is equal to uh, 2e. OK. So uh, the fact that uh, L uh, on a, on a polarized uh, K3 surface, L is an algebraic class, means that the, uh, this guy here must be orthogonal to, to L. Okay? So I want to uh, define uh, D to E. That's, that's going to be the period domain. OK, so I want x to, so these are, these are uh, sort, of, uh, sort of necessary relations which are satisfied by this uh, any generator of, a, of this vector space here. So x, x equals 0. So the, the product is the product for the given by the lattice. So I shouldn't write too, too low here. Uh, I want, uh, so there's another uh, positivity relation. OK, and I want x to be orthogonal to L. So this is a uh, open set, not Zariski open. It's open for the uh, Euclidean topology uh, in, uh, into a 19-dimensional quadric. If you count the, the dimension. And uh, OK. There is a, uh, a period map which goes from uh, k. So k is the modernized space to uh, not really uh, D to E, but it's quotient by uh, a group which, uh, which I'll write O tilde of uh, 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 lambda E. So lambda E is the orthogonal of L in lambda K3. So you can write down what it is. And uh, so this guy here is sort of a subgroup of the orthogonal group of uh, this lattice here. You can also see it as the, uh, uh, the space of uh, isometries of uh, lambda k3, which fix uh, L. Okay, so it's some sort of a discrete group. And so this map here uh, sort of uh, takes a polarized uh, uh, k3 to uh, the period. So it's sort of a, okay. 
inside uh, inside H two S Z. Okay. So this is this is a, a very quick definition. So of course this this depends. You need an identification of this lattice here with a K three lattice. Okay. And this is why you have to take this quotient. Okay. And so the the Torelli uh, theorem tells you that this is an open embedding. Okay, that's another way to state uh, that theorem. Okay, so both both are nineteen-dimensional, which is good, and uh, one is an open set in the other, and uh, the complement can also be described. Okay, so. Uh, everything is known here. So I guess, it, ah, oh, well, they're watching me now. I've, I'll, I'll stop here uh, and start again in a few minutes. Do you have questions? Go ahead. No questions. No questions.